Now that we have understood the process, it is necessary to know the planning and calculation to design the system better. It is a step by step process. First, we have to collect all the information. Second, we have to study the site and the roof plan. Third, we have to check the water harvesting potential that we can store the water or recharge or we can do both. Fourth, we have to calculate the capacity and see the location of structure. Fifth, we have to prepare the budget and estimate it. Catchment area could be either paved that are roofs or unpaved. Water on unpaved surfaces may dissolve more impurities or sediments from surface. Paved area catchments that are roofs, driveways, parking areas, courtyards and roads. These are smooth, clean surfaces and impervious to seepage. These surfaces collect greater quantity and better quality of water. Roof catchments have the maximum runoff and are generally considered. In India, roofs in urban areas are mostly made of RCC, GI sheets, tiles, slates and some roofs are thatched. Keep in mind that concrete or cement roofs retain more dust and dirt than metal roofs. When we calculate the catchment area, you need to know the type of catchment that is roof or unpaved. We have to see the number of catchments. We have to take the dimension of these catchments. Then we have to locate this catchment in the drawing. In the absence of site plan or roof plan, we have to measure each area and create a site plan that provides detail of catchments with the dimension. Now, to take the area of catchment, we have to calculate the length by width. In this small example, there is a roof one which is flat surface is area of 10 by 8 which is 80 square feet. There is roof 2 which is sloping roof which is area of 12 by 10 is equal to 120 square feet. Now when we add both these terraces the total area comes around 200 square feet. Note it down that regardless of the shape of the roof that is sloping roof the catchment area would be the area equivalent to the area under the rooftop. Rainfall is an important measure to calculate in the whole calculation. There are four kinds of information on rainfall that you need to check. Number one is average annual rainfall of a city. In our case, Ahmedabad has 757 mm in 44 days. Annual average rainfall is an overall picture of the total amount of water that can be collected. Second is the pattern of rainfall over different months. Whether it rains most of the year or only during a certain part of the year. Third is number of rainy days. Whether it is to store rainwater or to recharge it. The last one is the peak rainfall intensity. The size of the storage or recharge structure. The size is calculated on the basis of the amount of water needed to be stored or recharged during the most intense spell of rain, which can range from 15 to 30 minutes. Recharge structures will have to be designed in such a way that they will be able to deliver the peak intensity rainfall to the aquifer or store it temporarily during such intense spell. The source of this data is from the site given here. That way there is one more measure that is important which is collection efficiency. It tells that how much water we can collect from different surfaces. The higher the runoff coefficient, the higher water collection efficiency. In this table there are different surface types and their runoff coefficient. The standard coefficient we consider usually is 
daily water requirement per person. This is general calculation of how much water we use for different activities in a day per person. Total water consumption per day is 135 liters. As discussed, storage tanks can be either on ground or above ground. There are certain parameters that help to decide the size of storage tank. One is we have to check the existing tank capacity. Then we have to see the volume of rainwater that can be harvested. Third, we have to check the water demand of residents. Fourth, we have to check the space availability at site. And we have to see the layout of building as well. And we have to consider the budget available for the whole system and for the additional tank. In the case of say existing house, you should check the existing size of the tank. Then we have to check the space available at site and layout of the building. Now let's look at the total calculation process. Here is the example of RRWH calculation in whole. For example, we are assuming the water requirement is 135 liters per person per day. We have roof area of 20 feet by 30 feet, which is 600 square feet in total. This we have to convert into square meter, which is 55.74. Other measures are runoff coefficient, which is standard 0.9. We have four family members and their daily water consumption is 135 liters. Now, how much water that can be harvested? For that, we have to calculate roof area into runoff coefficient into rainfall, which is 37,976 liters. We have to also calculate total wo water demand that is number of person into their daily consumption into number of days of the whole year which is coming 197,100 liters. Now, if we check the rainwater available for total number of days for that the water that is harvested divide by number of person into their daily consumption which is 70 days. That means rest of the days we have to source the water from other source. In this case that is 1,59,124 liters of water needs to be sourced from other water source. So rainwater collection tank can be built as per the site condition and space available. We have to consider the 7 feet of depth that human can stand inside the tank and length and width of the tank should be calculated as per the size available at the site. Thank you.